flow as it follows from the English language, you know, washing away your sins, calling on his name, it is so from the Greek language. James? That's the great probability of it. Jimmy? The passage says to arise, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. The scripture teaches that one, through faith and repentance, in being baptized, is calling on the Lord's name. Acts 2.21, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And yet Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. The way they called on the name of the Lord on Pentecost Day was by repentance and baptism, at which time their sins were remitted. A sinner, in repenting of sins and in being immersed, is offering prayer to God to have mercy on his soul. And 1 Peter 3.21, which deals with water baptism, in some translation says that it is the seeking after, it is the appeal, it is the prayer, it's the craving of a good conscience before God. Let's take 1 Peter 3.21. That's in some translations. If you look in Arndt Gingrich, sure. you'll find that... Uh, what is Arndt Gingrich? It's uh, the standard Greek lexicon. I think we'd agree on that. Yes. Uh, he gives one of the possible meanings as a pledge proceeding from a good conscience. Not so, a question, but a pledge proceeding from a good conscience. Now, this is admittedly a difficult verse, but that's all the more reason for not putting the great weight upon it that is sometimes put because of the difficulty of the Greek. Uh, I want to respond by saying that it is, it is difficult to know how to translate this particular word, whether it should be pledge, as in the NIV, or whether it should be appeal, as it is in the RSV. I'll grant that. But okay. either way you take it, 1 Peter 3.21 says, After a likeness, or after the antitype of Noah's salvation, baptism doth also now save us. And it's not the putting away of the mere uh, physical stains from the skin, but it is uh, the calling on the name of, I beg your pardon, it is the appeal to God, or it is the pledge to God. And if you want to take it as pledge, one has the good conscience, and then he does it, but it's that by which he's saved. If you want to take it the other way, it's the appeal, then it is that by which he is saved, and then he is also asking God for a good conscience. James? Is the good conscience then uh, after the baptism or prior to it? I'm granting, uh, you, you talked about it being a hard text, and now then let's just stay with a hard text. Right. I'm granting that the good conscience may be prior to the baptism of 1 Peter 3.21, but the salvation isn't. The salvation comes, we are saved in baptism according to 1 Peter 3.21. How do we get a good conscience? Well, when an individual decides that he's going to repent of his sins, he's going to quit rebelling against God. But the salvation of 1 Peter 3.21 takes place in water baptism, just like Noah and his family were saved from that old world by water. 1 Peter 3.20. After a likeness, the antitype, the figure of that, when we are baptized in water, we're saved. Did I hear That's you say that, uh, that Noah was saved by the water? That's what or it says. By the ark. Well, the Bible says both. Would you like me to read? It says, when once Just the long... with the context that it says here. All right, verse okay. 20. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. No, they no, were saved in the ark the and by the water. It doesn't say by, it says no. through in the Greek. Okay, through. I'll take it that way. Well, well he went through the, through the water because he was in the ark. Mm -hmm. Before, before, before we get carried away, though, how can we say that it was through the water when everyone in the water drowned? Are you asking me? I mean, yes. I, all right, fine. If you want to take that point of view, everyone who went into the water drowned, then you carry that figure or that type over to the New Testament, and anyone who is baptized is damned. Anyone no, who is baptized no. is damned. Why would you if, take that view? Well, if, you, if you're arguing that salvation in 1 Peter 3.21 came by staying out of the water, then obviously anyone who went into the water died. Then if you want to carry the type over, the only that, ones, but that's a, a the only ones who would be saved position. would be those who stay out of the water, and those who get into the water would be those who are damned. Yep, but the problem's on your oh, side. Me, there's no problem with me. Oh, yeah. No problem at all, because the salvation under consideration in 1 Peter 3, 20, 20 and 21 does not have to do with his relationship to God. It has to do with the fact that he was saved from that old world of corruption. And if you will notice, I just read the language, which once 
uh, the some, uh, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. In some sense, water saved Noah's family. That's what's said in 1 Peter 3.20. And in 21, baptism is a figure of Noah's salvation. It is the antitype. It is the likeness. And as water was the dividing line between Noah and that old corrupt sinful world, so water baptism is the dividing line between our salvation in Let's Christ get a response on that. and outside. All right. Let me pick it up, Dave. Let me pick it up, Dave. Was there, is there contact in believer's baptism of water with the body? There obviously is. Right? I'm, I'm, the body, I'm sorry, Dave, I don't understand what well, you mean. The when I was Christ, baptized, the, the water of the baptistry came into contact with my body. Yes, right? Yes. Did any water come into contact with Noah's body? No. Right. So we've got to establish what the relationship is between the type and the antitype, which is the pointed issue. Okay. Have if we not? Had, if it had been for the water, the ark wouldn't have floated. Sure. So, so what does that prove? It proves that water became the element that separated from the destruction that was in the world with the salvation that was in the ark. If it had been for the water, he would have died. If I can make, you know, one point that you're getting into. What I hear both of you doing is really building a theology on little right. cliches and stories that you add to the text. Because if I read that text straight, it says this. <clears throat> it says, uh, who once were disobedience when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark in which, referring to the ark, a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through the water. And then that is what becomes the type and the anti-type. Now you can tell me all the stories about, well, if it's baptism, then everybody that's baptized will die. You can't push types to their end degree because types always break down. Stories are nice, but the literal statement refers to the ark as that which brought them to safety through the water, not the water itself. Okay, right, we've got James. a solid question here. I'd like to end with a verse that hasn't even come up, but it's been quoted a couple of times. And that's in Mark 16:16. 16, 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be condemned. May I have that one? All right, would you start with that? Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. These men are better Greek scholars than I am, but both belief and baptism in Mark 16, 16 are aorist participles, and shall be saved is a future verb. And participles take their time from the time of the leading verb. And so if it's aorist participles, they must be translated as having occurred before the time of the leading verb. The new ASB says, he who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. There is simply no way to get the salvation of Mark 16, 16 in between belief and baptism. Belief plus baptism equals salvation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. And that's the authority. Right, can we have a response down to that? Well, the point that needs to be made from it to begin with is that from a logician's viewpoint, if you look at a sentence like that, any time that you have two participles, as he indicates, one which is active, the first one, the second which is passive, they are aorist, the fact of the matter is that when you have two of them together in a construct like that with a single result, you get four different possibilities. With the sentence alone, the way that it's stated,